Several locations in Hollow Knight feature mysterious structures called Shade Gates. These are vertical structures of void that do not allow the knight to pass through them unless they use the Shade Cloak to shadow dash through. In terms of gameplay mechanics, Shade Gates are probably meant to block the player from accessing later game areas before they're ready or supposed to. But what about the lore? Where do these gates come from, and what purpose do they serve? I'll be discussing my speculations in this video. As for how Shade Gates seem to work, looking closely reveals that most are made from two connecting black orbs, one placed on the floor of a tunnel and another directly above it on the ceiling, through which a constant current of void flows. I'd say it works somehow like a magnet, with both void-containing orbs naturally attracted to one another and exchanging void between each other. Shade Gates were likely either created by the ancient civilization or the Pale King during his experimentations with Void. Let's look at every location in the game where a Shade Gate can be found. A total of eight exist in the game. Two in Fog Canyon, one in the middle of the area and one blocking an entrance to the Queen's Gardens, one in Queen's Gardens proper, one in Kingdom's Edge, one in Deep Nest, one in the east side of the abyss, and two in the birthplace. We can look at each individual shade gate and speculate about why it was placed where it was and what it might be protecting. First is the one in the middle of Fog Canyon. This one's placement in terms of game mechanics is likely a clue to its placement in terms of lore. In the game, the teacher's archives within Fog Canyon is the location of one of the dreamers, Monomon. Since the dreamers need to be destroyed in order to complete the game, it makes sense that the player would be expected to put in some work in order to reach them. Monomon put some extra security on her seal in the form of giving Quirrell her mask, so the Shade Gate was likely also set up to keep intruders away from the archives. The one at the entrance to the Queen's Gardens and the one within the gardens likely serve the same purpose, protecting the White Lady. In the game's story, she has long since isolated and imprisoned herself within her gardens by choice. The two Shade Gates likely serve the dual purpose of keeping intruders out and her in. The gardens also feature many steel gates that require levers to unlock, after all. Perhaps she had her guard Drya set up all the gates, both shade and steel. Then there's the one in Kingdom's Edge. This one blocks the area in which the warrior dream Markoth is encountered and battled. For gameplay purposes, the developers probably thought that this difficult fight would be significantly easier for players once they had the Shade Cloak. For lore, I have two theories about this one's placement. First is that it was placed there long ago by the ancient civilization, and that Markoth somehow found a way through it and deliberately chose the area past it to isolate himself. The other possibility is that Markoth became infected and therefore dangerous, so the Shade Gate was placed there after the fact in order to keep him in. For the first possibility, exposure to the void in the gate may have contributed to Markoth's death, and for the second possibility, the infection may have killed him. It's also possible that the Shade Gate had no ill effect on him and the infection alone was to blame for his demise. The one in Deep Nest blocks the way to the Sharp Shadow Charm. It makes perfect sense that Team Cherry wouldn't want players to have this charm before acquiring the Shade Cloak. Based on the Shade Gate's surroundings, it seems to have most likely been placed there by the ancient civilization. Several soul totems that have been corrupted by Void lie in the space beyond the Shade Gate, as well as a charm that was formed from a forbidden spell, so the bugs likely wanted to seal the area off for these reasons. The Shade Gate to the far east of the Abyss blocks the path to the space where the Hunter's Journal entry for the Void Tendrils is found. The entry is obtained when the knight inspects an imprint of abyss given form. The imprint itself, as well as the shade gate, were almost certainly placed there intentionally by the ancient civilization, likely for ritualistic purposes as part of their worship of the void. 
In this case, they would be passing through a wall of void in order to view an imprint of it which looked out over the sea of void. It most likely wasn't to keep out intruders, as the ancient bugs probably wouldn't have imagined outsiders entering an area so deep into the abyss. Finally, we have the two in the birthplace. These two notably lack the top and bottom structures of all other shade gates, suggesting a natural formation. One possibility is that these gates formed once the vessels were placed down there, possibly from the same void tendrils that pierced the vessel eggs. Another possibility is that these shade gates were the very first in existence. They inspired the ancient civilization to make the shade gates that they did, which in turn prompted the Pale King and his associates to make the ones that they did. This would mean that a way through the gates or to temporarily deactivate them was found when the vessel eggs were being placed in the abyss, as some eggs are found past them, including the one that the knight hatched out of. There's one more thing in the game resembling a Shade Gate, the entrance to the Pantheon of Hallownest. Like the Shade Gates, it seems to be a vertically flowing current of void. More than just the Shade Cloak is needed to get through this one, though, the Knight needs the Void Heart. This likely represents how the charm makes the Knight the master of all void and therefore powerful enough to contend with the bosses of this Pantheon. So what do you think? Do you agree with my speculations? What do you theorize about the lore surrounding Shade Gates? Let me know in the comments! Thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll know when I upload. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.